this GTEC Prusa i3 A Pro. It's been a real good printer. Got a couple small issues with it. Uh, well, things that I changed to make it work a little better. I'll show you a couple of them. But all in all, it is a very reliable printer once you get set up. Um, right now it's embarking on a four hour print. Uh, longest I've done so far I think is a 15 hour print. So uh, I've got a little bit of a mess going on here. I wish I'd kept better track of the modifications I've done on this machine. I put it in a heated cabinet um, which is what caused this problem. The uh, belt pulled out of the belt tooth holder. I think you can see right there where it got wider, where it stretched out, just kind of spread open. It just popped out of that side. Well, like I said, I put it in a cabinet, so it's kind of my fault. And uh, I've also added a little bit of heat to it. So, I'm guessing this might be made out of PLA, I don't know. But what I'm going to do is, on the back side of it, I took a, well, I took a Dremel and did most of it, but then I took a file that just happened to be the same width as a small tie wrap, put a notch through the back of it, and I'm going to do the same on the other end. And then once I get the belt in it, I'll just take the tie wrap and put it around it and pull it down tight. That way it won't warp back open and let the belt slide out of it again. Um, I'm making a notch deep enough so that once it's screwed on, if I, well, let me get this thing, okay, if I have to replace the tie wrap, I'll be able to, eh, maybe you need to go a little bit deeper, but then I'll be able to stick another tie wrap through there if I happen to, you know, pull it too tight and break it. But that's, that's the only plastic part on this machine that has stress on it at all. I mean, everything else that's even made of plastic is holding the electronic board on or something like that. So, like I said, because I put it in a cabinet, I just made a cabinet temporarily out of cardboard to decide what size it needs to be. The heat got to this. But now I get to put this back in there, underneath here, through here, line up two little screws in a slot. Luckily the nuts are staying in the back side of it. So, but I decided I was going to tighten the belt up a little bit. I was running a print, tighten the belt up a little bit just before I started running it, luckily. And uh, it ran, well, it ran part of the perimeter around it and uh, all of a sudden the belt went loose. So. put this in and see what happens. Alright, so that's the two screws I had to get to. One's there and one's kind of behind that from where we're at. And then, take you around back to the back of it. I got it slid back in and now I'm just going to have to pull the zip ties around, get them under the belt here. Pull the zip ties around and tighten them up and it won't fall out again. And then, once I get that tightened up, I'll just tighten the adjuster back up. And uh, even if I tighten a little bit snugger this time, it shouldn't pop apart. Uh, you know, not really a bad design, just my part of putting a, a cabinet around it, which I'm going to make a cabinet for it a little bit taller, but, and uh, heat it so... I'll probably change how that work, that uh, belt hooks together in the back eventually, but I think for now the uh, two zip ties wrapped around it are going to work. Alright, and uh, there it is with the tie wraps tightened up. I don't know how well you can see it on the camera because I can't get behind the camera. Uh, probably should have just disconnected all the wires, took this all the way out of the box to work on it, but I thought this would be faster. So now all i got to do is tighten the belt back up and trim these little ends off 
right here so they don't get tangled up with anything and see how it runs. All right, put it back in its home and well, it's temporary home and see how it works. Seems to be tight enough. Working on the cylinder head. This is the only other modification that you will need to do is let these float because well, as you can see I drilled that out with a step drill you can see how close to one side it is even as big as that hole is the nut when this thing uh, homes really moves around a lot so those just float on top of that now and the screws come in from the bottom they're countersunk into that piece that I made and I did flatten one side of it just a little bit to make sure that it's got room to wiggle when it wants to move to the left or the right that got rid of the z-axis wobble as you can see on that plate you can see a z-axis wobble and amazingly enough I noticed that it matches the pitch of the thread so it's going you know round and round as the as the uh, thread turns so I'm gonna try to get those parts uploaded to Thingiverse or something um, I designed them in 1, 2, 3D it's they're pretty easy to make but and they definitely helped the only thing I had to do is I didn't have these far enough down when I went to put these on I had to uh, loosen up these screws and reset the height of this I didn't have it far enough down I had a gap at the bottom edge down here and it was right up against it but they work real good um, give me a second here and I'll show you how much it wobbles uh, we're going to look at the one on this side. I've raised it up a little bit. I'm going to tell it to auto home so you can see how much it moves around. And that squeaking, I don't know, they're well oiled. But like I said, now it just, this part here just floats on top of that. Gravity holds it down. I mean it moves real easy and it should the slides should always move real free if they're not then it's going to bind up and mess with your print anyway I don't know how well you can see it um, but I drilled it almost to the edge of where the screw holes mount the nut um, this is the step bit I used and you probably can't see, can't even see the numbers on the camera, but uh, I believe I drilled it to about 9 16 and then just put it together, set it on top. Like I said, I'll get these up on Thingiverse 